Hey guys, it's Gwazi Dreamer again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm pretty excited because I'm launching a new demo for augmented reality with the XR Interaction Toolkit and also AR Foundation. In this video, I'm going to show you what I built over the last few weeks, which is going to be a demo that is going to allow you to do plane detection, also image tracking. You can also interact with the object. In this case, it's going to be the car, as you can see on the video that is playing behind. There's a lot of things that are included in this demo, so I'm pretty excited about it because it's going to allow you to customize this application for your own needs. I'm going to be launching this in Patreon and I'm pretty excited about it. And also a week after that, I'm gonna be making it available in GitHub. So let's jump into Unity and start looking at it. All right guys, so let me show you the application that I've been working on for Patreon. This is going to be an app that I demo and also release as in Patreon and also as open source. So as you can see, I'm gonna launch it. It's very, I'm gonna to try to keep it as vanilla as I can. So I have a lot of things going on in here. I'm basically scanning the room for plane detection. I am scaling the object, rotating the object. So I'm using the XR Interaction Toolkit for that. I can get inside the car, look around the car. I also have a logging information in here so that I know what's happening. I can also share and take an image by just selecting the icon that we have right here, looking at the car, rotating it, while I am inside the car, which is actually really cool that I can do that. I also have what's called an AR prop manager. So this is creating you know, reflections in augmented reality. I get reflections on the glass. I also get reflections on the, on the actual car. And then just basically rotating it. I also have an option to, you know, if I want to close the current you know, tracking object, I can click on the X and then place the object again, just in case the tracker gets you know out of control in this case you can see that i have some you know real world reflections i also have the ability to toggle between what's called ar planes and also image tracking so this is really powerful i can also you know add you know triggers around the scene where we're going to be snapping the car in this case this doesn't really work really well because it's a snapping to the unity logo that is on my computer but if you wanted to add you know different papers around the room that are the images that you want to track the objects that you are using are going to snap to that and you can rotate them and they're going to work so that's what i wanted to show you as far as like the demo i also have some information page that you can click on i also have different triggers that you can print out by you know if you wanted to send this to somebody and they wanted to test the app they can print it out and, and that's going to be the image that gets used for the for the image tracker so let me go ahead and show you some like an overview of the app and, and how it works. So this is the main view and, and you know everything works just like you see on the you saw on the actual demo. The the AR doesn't work because you actually have to you know run it on a device, but you can go into the info page. There's actually an icon here that I need to fix that it doesn't show with the right color. I also can go in and share the trackers just like you know you would do if you were if you were gonna share that information to somebody else. And also go back then i can also you know take an image take a picture take a video the video piece i'm using an asset that is called the replay the replay kit is from voxel busters and that one is a pay asset i'm going to be trying to implement it myself before before i you know i offer this as open source because that way you know i can't really do that because it's a pay asset so i'm going to make it open source and then i'll implement my own recording feature but for now i'm using i'm using their asset so some of the things that I have in here, it's, you know, I show you, if you watch my videos, I show you the configuration of the augmented reality scene. So I have an AR session, you know, the AR session origin. These are core components and of course my trackables. And then the, in this case, I implemented what's called an AR session manager. The, the AR session manager is going to be a component that it's kind of a orchestrator. So he knows how to talk to the AR plane manager. As you can see in here, he knows how to talk to the AR track image manager and also the AR placement placement single, which is a script that I implemented in one of the previous videos. So this object is the one that knows, okay, I know that I need to toggle between, you know, if I'm doing AR plane manager and all of a sudden I find an image, I want to make sure that I snap the car to the image. So he knows that that's the priority. And if I don't have an image, I'm gonna use plane detection. And I could, I could keep extending this if I want to use body tracking, if I want to use, you know, face tracking, I could I could really extend this object. So 
just just few you know few things to look at before you know before I make this code available is how this is set up and it's actually pretty simple. I'm I'm using a, a singleton component. I show you that in many of my videos, and if you're interested on in this code, and I can just direct you where that is in other one of my projects. So this one is the AR session manager. I have different button buttons in here that I am making available if I want to close the placement. This one is so that if you, let's say that you are doing airplane detection and you have the car already placing the scene, but you want to close that and create a new one because maybe the session get out of control and your planes are not in the right position. So that's what I'm using this for. I can close it. It's kind of like a close, you know, if you're using a Google document and you want to close and reopen it, that's kind of how this is. You're basically starting a new, you know, a new session of that, of the placement. This one is so if I want to close out of the session completely, I don't want to do any any airplane detection, I don't want to do any image, you know, image tracking, then you would click on this one. This one just different references to the managers that I have. You know, at the beginning I'm saying I'm saying I don't want to enable the image tracking because I'm you know I want I want to have the airplane manager enabled as default. Even though these are two set to false, I, I enable them down below and I'm gonna show you how that is basically you know attaching my image tracker to the to the different events that i have to detect when an image is changed and also removing those the handler every time you know i'm disabling this object this is just common practice always do it on enable adding and then on disable you're removing the event and then of course here's my you know the actual event that gets triggered when the when this event gets emitted i'm just saying okay close the you know close the exit placement button because I don't want to I don't want to allow somebody to exit because they're in the middle of doing image tracking they can close but they can exit so if they close then at that point I'm going to allow them to exit out so so what I'm doing just basically changing the state I'm saying okay the state of the app is I'm doing image tracking so I have this object in here that it's keeping track of the state I can show you that really quick it is just very simple it just has a current state is an enum and if I look at the implementation of a state I just have different states. One of them is idle, image tracking, plane detection. And this one, I'm just using a flag so that I can detect whether I'm, if I'm using both at the same time. I don't know if I'm gonna use that. For now, I'm just, I'm just saying if I'm doing image tracking, I'm doing image tracking. If I'm doing plane detection, I'm doing plane detection. I don't know if I'm gonna be using both. So at some point, I might. I don't see why right now. I guess if I have multiple objects, I could do that. So for now, you're just using just a single one. And then I'm just saying, okay, if I, if I capture an image, I'm gonna deactivate plane detection. I'm destroying the current placement because what's gonna happen is when the image gets detected, the image itself is going to instantiate its own object. So I'm just saying destroy the placement here because at that point I might have already used plane detection. So I'm just saying, you know, let's go ahead and check, make sure that I don't have an object already instantiated. If I have an object instantiated, destroy it. And I'm gonna let the update object tracker create its own object, which is happening in the placement object itself. I go here. You're gonna see that I have a getter and I say, okay, if the placement object is null, I'm gonna instantiate it, otherwise give me the one that I already have. And I'm gonna go into more in depth in those, you know, in that implementation. Right now it's just more of an overview, so don't get panic if I'm just going too fast. And then on the update, what I'm saying is just go ahead and update the position and the rotation. That's that's the way that this is gonna work. And I'm just saying, you know, the stay still image tracking. So if I were to close out of this, and let's say that I don't want to do image tracking anymore, we can look at the object, the close placement object. I'm just saying, okay, if I'm closing the placement, I'm gonna destroy, destroy the placement, I'm gonna activate plane detection because I don't, my default is gonna be plane detection. But if I find the image, I'm gonna go back up here and I'm gonna say, okay, the, the, now we're in image tracking mode. But if we're not in image tracking mode, I'm gonna, act, you know, I'm gonna close the placement, I'm gonna activate plane detection and I'm gonna set the state to plane detection. And then, and then I'm just gonna say, okay, go ahead and grab all the different planes and then enable them. And if I'm not using plane detection, I'm gonna disable. So this other object, this other method in here goes through each one of the trackable, the planes that are already generated, and it sets it to the state based on, so if I'm if the state is to do plane detection, all the planes are gonna be showing, otherwise they're not gonna be showing. Even though in the video you didn't see the planes, the planes are actually there. I just didn't wanna show them because it just makes it look it doesn't make it look that cool, but if you wanna show them, you can change the material color, and I can show you how to do that. So it's kind of an overview of how this application works. If you guys have any questions, I'm gonna go into in-depth into each one of the features, but for now, just know that 
this is going to be an application that is going to be available in Patreon. So make sure that you check me out in Patreon and get the tier that is called Early Access Source Code. And I'm going to make this code available in about a week in Patreon in, in a couple of days after that in GitHub as open source. So thank you very much, guys. I really appreciate your time. All right, guys, thank you much for watching this video today. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions about anything that I just mentioned on the video that I just showed you, please let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out gamedev.net because they have great resources for game developers. And also find me in patreon.com where I'm basically posting videos in source code as the one that I show you in this video and also early access source code to other different experiments that I create. So thank you very much, guys.